Jesus said to them, Give therefore to the emperor that which is the emperor's, and to God that which is God's. To the honor and glory of God, who by the word and through the spirit creates, redeems, and sanctifies us. Amen. Greetings, and thank you for joining me this Sunday as we reflect upon the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. This week, my husband and I had a conversation with our daughter. She was concerned that her parents were a bit judgy about other people's decisions. Her dad and I tried to express to her that while decisions made for expediency's sake are sometimes necessary, they're not always healthy. That decisions should be made from one's values. And for her dad and I, who value things like mutuality and human flourishing, there are some decisions that were less healthy, less in line with achieving those values than others. And it wasn't a matter of us hating or despising or dehumanizing people who made different decisions than we would. The matter for us was being very clear about the values that go into the decisions that we make, the values that we hoped would go into the decisions that she made. I was reflecting upon that conversation as I prepared my sermon on today's gospel passage. Today's passage is that passage where the Pharisees and the Herodians get together in a plot to entrap Jesus. I imagine for the early hearers of Matthew's gospel, this was a shocking arrangement. You see, the Pharisees despised Rome. They hated Roman occupation. They had spent years negotiating with the government of Rome to try to keep Roman politics out of their business. The Herodians, on the other hand, had decided that their political and economic interests were in line with those of Rome. And so they shored up their power by being in partnership with Rome. And so when Matthew says that the Pharisees went and plotted to trap Jesus, and they went to him with the Herodians, that these two groups from opposite ends of the political spectrum decided that their interests were aligned when it came to eliminating the threat that was Jesus of Nazareth would have been shocking. And yet Matthew says they go to Jesus to entrap him. This is a theme in the Gospel of Matthew, that, that people are always trying to trip Jesus up. And they go to him with flattery saying, teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Now, if you know a bit about Roman history, taxes were the lifeblood of the Roman Empire. You know that the whole reason that Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem for the census in the first place was for the purposes of taxation. Rome levied taxes against all of those territories that they occupied. And the penalty for not paying taxes was often extreme and severe, and sometimes even deadly. And so by asking Jesus this question, they were trying to paint him into a corner as an occupied territory, trying to present him as a danger to everyone 
because he would defy Rome. But Jesus, knowing what they were up to, said, You hypocrites, why are you putting me to the test? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they were quickly able to produce what for the Pharisees was an unclean, secular, dirty coin. And Jesus took that coin. And I love the translation that says it this way, that says, whose image is this? And whose title? Some translations say, whose face is this? Or whose head is this? But, but I like the question, whose image is this? And they all say, Caesar's. And Jesus says, well, give to Caesar that which is Caesar. Give to the emperor that which is the emperor's. And give to God that which is God's. Now, the conundrum in this statement is that if you were raised in a culture that said to you regularly, Hear, O Israel, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You will have no other gods but me. If you were raised in a culture where the expectation was that you would tithe the first fruits of your crops, of your profits, that you would give that back to God because it was all about God's grace. If, if your culture had taught you from day one that you go to the temple to present your firstborn son, because that is a gift from God, then you recognize there is nothing in your life that isn't God's. That, that if your values recognize that all that you have, all that you obtain, all that you have in your life is by God's grace, then it's all God's. And the question then is not about whether you're a willing or unwilling participant in an oppressive economy. The question is, whose image do you serve? Whose image are you willing to make your decisions with regard to? Whose image are you putting your utmost faith and trust in? We, as followers of Jesus, know that all of us are created in God's image. We have, we have been given that as a value. And through the teachings of Jesus, the, the flattery of the Pharisees is absolutely true. That Jesus offered God's grace with no partiality that Jesus did not regard people with deference, but looked for the image of God in all of us. As we get closer to our national election, as we see more clearly how divided we are as a nation, the questions that we have to ask ourselves is whose image are we really serving? As one anonymous person wrote, there were times when to be a good Christian meant you had to be a bad Roman. That in all times, we have to ask ourselves, what kingdom are we serving? Whose image do we hold dear? What values do we hold as our bedrock values, our baptismal values, the values of being people who walk with Jesus? And do we hold those values up when we are evaluating the choices we make? 
This is the challenge that Jesus laid before the Pharisees and the Herodians. And they were stunned, amazed. They had to grapple with that question and they had no answer. And our work, yours and mine, is grappling with that question. Whose image do we serve in our world? What kingdom do we aspire to hold up, to live into, to embody? And yes, you may not like paying taxes. I surely don't. But I always remember that we render unto Caesar that which is Caesar, and we render unto God that which is God's. Amen.